Hello and welcome to Braille Institute's 2022 annual meeting celebration. I'm Simone Montemurno and I've been instructor here for the past five years now. I have the honor of teaching art to our adult students and I love how art gives someone with vision loss the ability to express themselves. Art can be an incredibly tactile experience and we are so happy that our students have had the ability to return to classes on site and in person. One of the classes I teach is a ceramics class for our deafblind students. These students have been away from the classroom for more than two years, given the temporary closure of our center due to the pandemic. And there just isn't a replacement for the hands-on nature that our in-person classes offer. And we are so pleased to have reopened all of our centers this past spring. Our students are at the heart of our mission, and there's nothing better than seeing their happy faces, watching their creative engagement and hearing their laughter and experiencing the human connection of their being together. They have such a joy of returning to the Braille community. We're opening this year's meeting with a few highlights of just that. So enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Peter Mindick, president of Braille Institute. And on behalf of our board of directors and executive leadership team, I welcome you all to our virtual annual meeting celebration. This year's theme is about expanding possibilities, which is so fitting because we passionately believe life can be lived to the fullest when every person is able to capture the possibilities and opportunities available to them. My first order of business is to recognize all the different stakeholders who are with us here today. We have many of our amazing students and patrons, staff members who work passionately every day for Team BIA, hi team, our hardworking board members, many of our dedicated donors and volunteers, several program review committee members who have helped us so much with the ongoing renewal of our programming, and also members of our committed auxiliary teams. And I love doing this meeting virtually because so many more of our stakeholders can participate and join us for this live stream event. So welcome one and all, and thank you so much for all you do to advance the great mission of Braille Institute. As you just heard from the opening segment, we are so excited to have reopened all of our centers this past spring. And just as importantly, we remain fully committed to continue providing services and classes remotely, so many of you can also stay connected from the convenience of your home. We have now fully launched what we call our hybrid delivery model which means students have the option to take classes in person at a center or remotely by phone or computer. And we have many of you who are taking advantage of both of these options. 
Do you know that we now have individuals joining us from all over the U.S. and even from other countries? It is so exciting and gratifying to see Braille Institute now being able to significantly increase the number of people we serve each year. And for all of this, we thank you, each one of you, for your commitment to our great mission and your passion to serve. Your work, ideas, support have been truly outstanding. I will now turn the mic over to Sandy Shin, our Vice President of Marketing and Communications, who led the creation of today's programming. Thanks, Sandy, for all you do and your team does to advance our mission, our brand, and our visibility. Thank you, Peter. For those of you that cannot see me, let me describe where I am. I'm standing inside the Weingart Conference Center at our Los Angeles Center. There's a large wall banner behind me showing happy students that are hiking and skateboarding. It's a great illustration of how our students stay active and enjoy life. Today's annual meeting celebration is an opportunity for all of us to come together to recognize and reflect on all that we have accomplished over this past year. We have a great agenda and program we've put together for you. Next up is a year in review video that highlights the many things we've accomplished over the past 12 months. Then you'll hear from one of our volunteer instructors, Eric, who will give a demonstration of a class he teaches here at Braille Institute. Following that, Donna will thank all of our extraordinary volunteers. Then we will hear from Skylar, one of our technology consultants, who will introduce you to Manny, a student he has worked with. Next, we're going to test your knowledge with a fun, interactive quiz that will be introduced by Ivan, one of our library staff members. Jay from our San Diego Center will then move us into our staff recognition segment where we will celebrate anniversaries of those who have faithfully served Braille Institute for 25 or more years and acknowledge those who have retired after many years of dedicated service, as well as welcome new members who've joined our team. Then we are all in for a big treat as Scarlett, our children's choir director, leads our youth choir in a beautiful musical performance. And to wrap things up, Michael Corley, our current board chair, and Jim Rhodes, our incoming board chair, will share some closing remarks. So let's get this show on the road. Braille Institute, a year in review. We accomplished so much together. Over 100 classes offered each semester. Hats off to our amazing instructors who delivered more than 72,000 hours of group instruction this past year. They engaged with students both virtually and in person. Welcome everyone to Independent Living Skills Lesson 1, Marking and Labeling. So we're talking about task lighting in the kitchen. And um, what you want to look at is you want to look at what specific tasks you're doing and where. What a joy to see our students participate with enthusiasm and delight. Okay. You want to make sure that you are behind him from your shoulder just because you don't know how narrow the doorway is. Eye doctors and expert speaker seminars. There are two devices that OrCam actually has. Uh, one is called the OrCam My Eye. I'm holding it up and Ashley's. We hosted seminars with outside experts discussing a range of topics. And because they were virtual, people from all over the country and world could participate. Then it's taking a picture and then speaking back the information. More than 1,700 participants joined us for workshops this past year. Read the headlines. Being paid to sit in SNL seats by Julia J. I just want to say what a privilege it is for us to be presenting today. Dr. London and I are both very passionate about macular degeneration in regards to advocacy, education, treatment. I'd like to introduce you to Atkinson Hyperlegible a font created in collaboration with the Braille Institute for low vision readers and their communities. More than 470,000 library books were mailed out. Our extraordinary library team enabled patrons to keep listening to their favorite audiobooks all year long. We also shipped more than 1,700 Braille books and story kits to blind and visually impaired children. Child Development Graduation. We celebrated 12 young children ranging up to six years in age who graduated from our Child Development Program. 
What a wonderful way to highlight children and their families. I just want to say thank you, Liz, um, for all what you work uh, with Lisa. And you are a very special person for us. And thank you for all your help. Thank you, Liz. Virtual Beach Day. We also hosted a virtual beach day for our little ones by shipping them sand and water play toys. You guys got some fishes? Some of them are blue, some of them are green, red, orange. Adult Braille Graduation. We congratulate 17 of our adult students who demonstrated Braille literacy from books one to three of both uncontracted and contracted Braille. Let's hear from a few who share their journey for lifelong learning. I've always wanted to read for myself and not have people read to me all the time or feel feel incapable when I am capable. Once I start learning uh, Braille with you, um, I move from resignation to, to acceptance. Acceptance because now I know that it's not the end. In-person Braille Challenge Finals. Almost 800 students took part in 41 regional semifinals and more than 280 finalists and their families joined us for in-person finals on the USC campus. It was so great to be able to be together again, sharing in the excitement and fun. Youth Performances Students from our youth program and Johnny Mercer Choir got together throughout the year for talent shows, music reviews, and concert performances. They are all so super talented. Now, let's hear from some of our amazing students who share how Braille Institute has helped them in their journey with vision loss. I want to say thank you, because oh. that was the only way I got the job was through Microsoft Teams. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's a huge difference for me. I, honestly, I'm, I'm being honest, because that was my way of, during COVID to go through interviews and being able to talk to people, see them. Uh, I went through the, the job I have now, I went through five different interviews that were virtual interviews and they went through Microsoft Teams. And I would have never, never in my wildest thoughts or dreams been able to do that unless I had taken your class and you had the patience with us to teach us how to do it. Little by little and also with your help and with the help of Braille Institute, I can build my self-confidence a bit by bit because all of what you need to have a better quality of life is at the Braille Institute. Guaranteed. Because the people there are very involved, they're very dedicated, focused, and they have your best interest in quality of life and your family's at heart. Truly, you all demonstrate that there is no boundaries in sight. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Cooley, and I'm one of the volunteers here at the Los Angeles Center. I started coming to Braille back in January of 2015, but first as a student. I have what's called retinous pigmentosa, or what's often referred to as RP, which has caused me to lose most of my vision. But coming to Braille has helped me regain not only my independence, but also my confidence. I remember when I first started coming to Braille back in January of 2015, I took a computer typing class and the instructor was Jose Macedo. 
and he's a blind volunteer himself. Just witnessing him and being in his presence was so inspiring and seeing other volunteers that were visually impaired uh, volunteering as well was so motivating that it inspired me to become a volunteer myself. And in fact, for the past five years now, I've been teaching what's called the Mindful Living class out of the Los Angeles Center. Mindfulness has been uh, shown to be such a powerful tool in not only reducing stress, but also maintaining healthy self-care habits. And now I would like to share with all of you and give you a little glimpse into the class with a little what's called a stop practice. So it's gonna be about a minute or a few mindful moments. The S in stop is to just completely stop whatever it is that you're doing throughout the day. The T in stop is to either take a couple of deep breaths or if it feels more appropriate, one slow, long inhalation and exhalation. The O in stop is to observe and to perform what I like to call a three-point check-in. The first check-in is, what physical sensations am I noticing right now? The second, how am I feeling? Am I feeling pleasant, unpleasant, or maybe neutral? And then the third check-in is checking in with your thoughts. What thoughts am I noticing right now? Are they directed towards the future? Are they directed towards the past? Or are they connected with whatever it is that I'm doing? And then finally, we have the P, which is to proceed and to return to whatever activity you were doing. And this can be done at the stop of a dime at any moment throughout your day. And I'd like to thank all of you for your presence and for practicing together. And just be and be well. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for taking us through that great mindfulness exercise. You are a wonderful example of how our volunteers impact our students in such positive ways. I'm Donna Wager, Director of Volunteer Services, and I'm so fortunate to be able to work with our volunteers who share their time, talent, and experience with us. They bring incredible compassion and dedication to our mission. First off, a big thank you to our virtual volunteers who have continued to help us with our remote classes. And as we continue to expand our on-site classes, we look forward to welcoming more of our volunteers back in person. I'm reminded of an inspirational quote, we rise by lifting others, because that's exactly what our volunteer superheroes do. Today, we want to lift the spirits of our amazing volunteer team through our heartfelt thanks and gratitude. Here are some of our staff and students whose lives have been touched by the spirit of volunteerism. This is Faye Roberts, and I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to all the volunteers at Braille Institute. Thank you for helping us making the classes even more wonderful. I just want to thank all of the volunteers and the personnel that are associated with the Braille Institute. Uh, what a fantastic job you've done, particularly for the last two years during this pandemic. Having the Zoom classes, uh, I think, is a great help for people, particularly who don't drive, can't get to the center. So uh, I thank you all very much for all your help and hard work. It's been, it's been great. I hope to continue with this. And I hope you continue with this too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for our Institute volunteers. You are superheroes. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias a todos nuestros voluntarios por su apoyo. Thank you. Thank to you to all, all our volunteers. We love you. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you. 
Yeah. And I want to say thank you to all of our volunteers for always being there, for always doing a great job, for your support every time we need you. And we truly appreciate everything in general that you do. So many blessings and keep doing the good work. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye. On behalf of the Laguna Hill Center, we want to thank all Braille Institute volunteers for keeping us all connected during these times. To all you wonderful volunteers at Braille Institute, thank you for bringing so much sunshine into us. And I really appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless. Thank you, Braille Institute superheroes. You saved us! We, we love, 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 love our volunteers. volunteers. Thank you, volunteers, for the wonderful job you do. We really do appreciate you. Hi, I'm, my name is Michelle and I'm from the San Diego Center and I just want to thank all of our volunteers that work at Braille Institute here in San Diego and you guys are amazing putting things together and helping out with everyone when they need it and we really 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 appreciate you guys and all of your help that you give us and yes thank you so much you guys are awesome Thanks to all the volunteers at the Braille Institute for your kindness, your patience, and the wealth of knowledge in helping me get through my loss of sight. So thank you so much. There are many incredible people at the Braille Institute, but there's a group that stands out and that is the volunteers. Because they care, and they do understand the journey that we are going through and the obstacles we must overcome. They spend their time helping not only the instructors and the staff, but also being there to advocate for those of us who continue on working through our issues and daily lives of being visibly disabled or blind. So I'd like to say thank you to all of them. Thank you, volunteers. I am Skylar Kovic, an access technology instructor at the Santa Barbara Center. Assistive technology has been a game changer, allowing people with sight loss to do many daily activities, and it allows all of us to keep connected. I love my job as a technology instructor, and I can relate to what students are going through because I have been totally blind since birth due to Libra's amaurosis. I'd like to introduce Manny Hernandez, a student I've worked with to learn Siri and voiceover on his iPhone. Manny is a student at the Anaheim Center and has gone back to his old job less than two years after experiencing complete sight loss. Hi, my name is Manny Hernandez and uh, I currently live in uh, Lakewood, California. The first two weeks of February, I started losing my vision. I come to find out I, I had a stroke and I didn't even know about it. When I was discharged from the hospital a week later, I went completely black. I couldn't see anything. And then I landed with the Braille Institute and then asking for a technology teacher because I figured I need to learn how to use some of this technology. And then I got a phone call randomly from Skylar. Hi, it's Skylar. Hey, Skylar, it's Manny. Hey, Manny, how are you? All right. And he said, hey, I heard you need some help with technology. Wow, that's amazing. That's gonna save me a whole lot of time. Very polite, very awesome. And through his patience, I learned simple hand gestures on uh, Siri and voiceover. I learned how to skip to the next thing. So to some people, it's like nothing, but to me, it was meant the world. So, so if you say, set an appointment for home management class on Monday at 10 o'clock. Siri, set an appointment OEM class for Wednesday at 1 p.m. I scheduled your appointment for Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. 
Oh, that's amazing. That's great. So your calendar is integrated. And every day I'm learning more and more. I'm getting to the point where my next step is I want to tackle working on a laptop. You just like opened up a whole other world right now. I'm going to start setting appointments just to set an appointment. <laughs> oh, at the very beginning, I was like a one or two, if that, and I would get constantly frustrated. I would put my proficiency now from a, a scale of one to 10 to at least a seven now. It jumped up all the way to a seven. I'm, I'm confident now enough to where I can do certain things because of what I learned at the Brill Institute. Thank you, Manny, for sharing your story. Hi everyone, I'm Ivan Johnson. I'm the Library Materials Development Coordinator. I'm excited to be your host for this fun and interactive part of our annual meeting. Here's how this is going to work. A question will be displayed and read on screen. We want all of you to share your answer or take a guess by typing it in the chat, which is located just below or to the right of this video. If you can't find the chat and you're watching on a smartphone or tablet, tap the live chat button located below this video. Then we'll share the answer and you can see if you got it right. There are three total questions. Let's get started. Question one, what was the most popular book title requested by our patrons this past year? A, Becoming by Michelle Obama, B, Dark Sacred Night by Michael Connolly. C. The Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie. Answer A. Becoming by Michelle Obama. Did you know you can download over 100,000 titles each in a matter of seconds using our free library app called Bard? Question number two. During the 2022 Braille Challenge season, what state or province had the most students participate in Braille Challenge Regionals? A, Alberta, Canada. B, Florida, USA. C, Oklahoma, USA. The answer, B, Florida with 89 students. Did you know Braille Challenge is the only academic competition of its kind in North America and the UK? Question number three. How many new employees did we welcome to Braille Institute this past year? A, 12, B, 19, C, 25. The answer, C, 25 new employees. Welcome to all our newest team members. We're so glad you're here. Hello, I'm Jay Hatfield, Regional Director of our San Diego Center, and I'm here at our new location in the Stonecrest Business Complex. I'm proud we have been serving the San Diego community with our full programs and services since 1993, and I hope you'll come by and visit our new center. Well, this is my 32nd year with Braille Institute, and wow, time flies when you're having fun. I am honored to host this portion of the meeting because this is where we get to recognize our incredible staff members. Let's take a moment to give a shout out to those celebrating anniversary of 25 years or more, bid a farewell to those who have retired, and welcome all the new staff who have joined Braille Institute this past fiscal year. The backbone of any organization is its people, and we are so fortunate to have remarkable people who are dedicated, caring, and love what they do. So let's roll it. Congratulations to all Braille Institute staff members who are celebrating anniversaries of 25 to 29 years. Siranush Etian, 27 years. Catherine Boyce, 29 years. Hun Min Chen, 28 years. Hermie Cosme, 27 years. Edith Gavino, 28 years. Nancy Hutchins, 27 years. Sid Metcalf, 26 years. George Miller, 
27 years. High France Rafting, 26 years. Jean Walters, 27 years. Congratulations to all Braille Institute staff members for celebrating anniversaries of 30 to 39 years. Leopoldo Bernal, 32 years. Melva Crump, 33 years. Michael Dura, 33 years. Emilia Garcia, 32 years. Jay Hatfield, 32 years. Raphael Herbison, 35 years. Jenny Hoare, 37 years. Lisa Jimenez, 31 years. Deborah Lawrence, 32 years. Joanne Leventhal, 35 years. Kima McClung, 35 years. Leah Myers, 38 years. Raisa Rahman, 31 years. Angela Scott, 39 years. Sean Tapia, 31 years. Maria Valdivia, 31 years. Donna Wager, 35 years. Ha Yen, 32 years. A very big congratulations to all Braille Institute staff members who are celebrating anniversaries of 40 to 49 years. George Apcar, 42 years. Tina Herbison, 41 years. A super big congratulations to all Braille Institute staff members who are celebrating anniversaries of 50 years or more. Gary Clark, 50 years. Jennifer Chambers, 51 years. A big thank you to our retired staff for your dedicated years of service. Sally Coleman, Los Angeles. Delia Mix, Los Angeles. Rachel Quito, Los Angeles. Immaculata Salcedo, Laguna Hills. And finally, let's extend a warm welcome to our newest staff members at Braille Institute. Antoinette Bone, Los Angeles. Andrew Cabal, Riverside. Christina Chavez Herrera, Los Angeles. Hannah Chu, Los Angeles. Kimberly Coleman, Los Angeles. Aaron Franklin, Laguna Hills. Anna Guillen, Anaheim. Byron Hammond Jr., Los Angeles. Lauren Lagu, Los Angeles. Lisa Lepore, Los Angeles. Karen Lopez, Anaheim. Kyra Mays, Los Angeles. Maria O'Connor, Los Angeles. Jose Orozco Leon, Riverside. Camille Raquel, Los Angeles. Griselda Reyes, Riverside. Marvin Reynolds II, Los Angeles. Erica Rodriguez, Anaheim. Jane Shim, Los Angeles. Roseanne Semeroff, Los Angeles. Adrian Torab, Los Angeles. Crystal Valenzuela, Laguna Hills. Hello, I'm Scarlett Bray, the Youth Choir and Music Program Director here at Braille Institute. We have had an exciting year of both virtual and in-person activities and performances. The year has included talent shows, concerts, and field trips. We even collaborated with the Pacific Opera Project, who taught a virtual opera masterclass to our students and allowed them to attend their spring opera production of Tchaikovsky's Yolanta, a fairy tale about a blind princess. It has been a very busy and fun-filled year. This next video was recorded as part of our 2022 spring concert that featured songs from American music icons. This is our seventh music video project as a choir. These music videos challenge students to record and sing their parts on camera with the assistance of a guide vocal track and personalized performance coaching. Please enjoy Braille Institute's Johnny Mercer Youth Choir and their performance of Stevie Wonder's song, which pays tribute to the great Duke Ellington. 
This is Sir Duke. Wow, what an incredible performance by our youth choir. Thank you, one and all. It has been my honor and pleasure to serve as board chair these past four years. Time flies when you work with outstanding and caring people who share such passion and commitment for our mission. I have seen firsthand how our organization makes a difference in so many people's lives. I'm not only energized by the staff and volunteers who bring this place to life every day, but by our students who demonstrate such tenacity and strength. I can't wait to see what we do together next. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next incoming board chair, Mr. Jim Rhodes. Jim has served on our board for the past 21 years. He serves on multiple committees, including the executive, finance, compensation, and risk oversight. I know he will bring the same dedication and commitment to this new role. Please help me welcome Jim Rhodes. Thank you, Michael, for that kind welcome. We have truly benefited from your leadership, passion for mission, strategic thinking, and thoughtful guidance these past four years as board chair. We have a gift for, of appreciation that I want to present to you, so please come up. Michael, you leave a solid legacy of leadership as you have helped position the Braille Institute for a significant growth and mission impact for decades to come. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I am honored to be stepping into the role of board chair. I've seen firsthand how we make a difference in people's lives. My friend Kenny, who was a lawyer, received services from Braille Institute for his low vision. 
He learned to use a video magnifying device that allowed him to extend his ability to practice law because he could keep reading contracts and necessary legal documents. It is an honor to serve on the board, and over my 21 years of doing so, my experience with Braille Institute has been extremely meaningful and fulfilling. So let me close this meeting by saying on behalf of the board of directors, thank you to all of you who make a positive difference every day in the lives of our students, patrons, and families. Thank you to our board of directors, program committee leaders, auxiliary leaders, executive leadership, and volunteers for your exemplary dedication, hard work, and passion. I also want to thank our donors whose generous gifts enable us to keep our programs and services free of charge and which allow us to keep empowering our students to live life to the fullest. The pandemic has challenged us in ways we've never seen and keeping our services free to anyone who needs them is one of the things that makes me very proud. Our community of staff, volunteers, and students are simply extraordinary. I am moved and inspired by all that we have accomplished this past year. Our future is incredibly bright, and I can't wait to see what we do in our next century of service. Thank you for joining us today. This meeting is adjourned. Please enjoy these fun shout outs from members of our team. We love how these messages show appreciation, kindness, and team spirit. Over the past years, our BIA family has had to learn, adapt, work, and teach remotely throughout the pandemic. I would like to thank our brilliant teachers for your dedication and kindness. I'd like to give a special shout out to our employees who continue to work at the office during the shutdown to help keep running the business. Our team in facilities, business services, accounting, our technology and development team as well. Our leadership team who continue to keep us motivated and provide us with the tools we need to work from home. Thank you. I would like to congratulate our pandemic response team who continue to make our safety a priority. I am happy to say that I am proud to be part of the Braille Institute team and family. Hey there, I'm Jeff, and I want to give a shout out to Maria and Dave, our fearless leaders of the IT department who make sure all your gizmos and gadgets and websites are running smoothly. They have done such a good job of making me feel welcome and making the entire IT department a very friendly and welcoming space. And so while I'm at it, I might as well just give a shout out to the entire IT department. Y'all are amazing. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Hi. I just wanted to give a shout out to Raphael in IT that what a change he's made in our center and he's helped me and many other people a lot. Thank you. Hey there. Bringing finals back in person was no easy task. I want to give a huge shout out to the NP team and to our leads, Lisa, Lynn, Phil, Karen, and Sergio. We did it guys. So grateful we made it happen. Getting it together. Keeping it together. Job well done. Edith Gavino, Circulation Services Manager. Hi everyone, this is Melanie. And Nikki from the San Diego Center. We'd like to shout out to Gigi, Jay, Julius, Kima, Melissa, Roberta, Sharon, Taylor, and Wanda. Oh, wait, Victor! <laughs> and Wanda. <laughs> Thanks for all the hard work. We love our team. Thank you.